Welcome, this is Scott Holohan, and I'm excited to moderate a social media uh, for our webinar Wednesday. And it's going to be uh, an exciting feature here to use this empire to connect and make your Toastmasters club as best as it possibly can be reaching other people, reaching our not only our members, but uh, prospective members as well. Tonight we have a treat. We have Tammy York here, who is going to go through a, a presentation that she just recently gave at a TLI. The objectives of the presentation is to understand social media platforms better. We shall also talk about which social media uh, platforms to use, and then how to get started using social media platforms. Uh, Tammy is a, a competent communicator. She is a member of competitive competitive speakers club in Cincinnati. She's a past team member and coach for the District 40 public relations team, and she has been a Toastmaster for a, a little over two years, maybe about two and a half years. So before we get started, I wanted to go through a couple of practicalities and the first one is in the chat window, there is a link to a downloadable uh, form for you, as well as a copy of the presentation. Uh, there's a link to Tammy's website. Tammy is an author, which I'll go over here in a little bit. And she uh, she has a, a link that you can download some of the practicalities, or actually in the presentation for this. She has a, a, also a two-page uh, questionnaire which I think will help you if you can download that while we're going through this it might help you uh, answer some questions about and set you up for the presentation and maybe answer uh, some questions along the way and there oh, another practicality is that uh, for those of you who are listening please uh, ensure that your lines are on mute when you're not speaking or when you don't want to ask a question that way we can minimize the background noise so let's talk a little bit more about Tammy here. <laughs> I'm gonna set you up here, Tammy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so Tammy is a, like I said, she owns her own company. It's called Landshark Communications, correct? Yes. Excellent. And she, let me see here. I've got, I'm trying to pull it up here for some reason. It's I'm having some technical difficulties here. All right, she is an award-winning professional speaker, content strategist, and the author of best-selling book, 60 Hikes Within 60 Miles of Cincinnati. She has been interviewed on all the major television and radio stations in the Cincinnati and Dayton area, as well as interviewed by multiple newspapers, including USA Today and the Cincinnati Inquirer. Quite impressive. I like that. Her clients benefit uh, from her insights and her ability to pitch stories to the media. Uh, as I mentioned, she owns her own company, Landshark Communications LLC, which is a public relations and marketing company. And she has a superpower, which is being able to find and deliver stories that resonate. And hopefully that will resonate with you tonight and your Toastmasters clubs. I will now turn it over to Tammy York. Tammy, the floor is yours. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So we'll get started here. Um, thanks for the great intro. I have been working in social media um, since kind of it first came out. I kind of resisted Facebook at the very first, and then I saw there was a great opportunity for me to promote my book um, through Facebook. And once I started there, I went to other places and became a consultant to companies, helping them figure it out. Because no matter what social media platform you're on, you're telling a story, you're sharing a story. Just like when you give a presentation at Toastmasters, you're sharing a story. And that's what people gravitate to. Um, and it's been proven multiple times. If I gave you here five facts, and I gave you an, another video that I told you those five facts, but I told you in the structure of a story. And if we looked at the metrics for both of those videos, say on YouTube or on Facebook, the one where I tell a story about those metrics is going to be much higher in the, in the number of people who watch it. So, so think about everything that you do in the case of like, what is the story behind it? Let's see if I can get my, there we go. So 
why bother with social media? One of the things that, like I said, like I was really resistant to it at first because, you know, kind of the idea of you know, like sharing too much and you see people out there and this is what I had for breakfast and this is what I had for lunch. Um, and that's, that's kind of overkill. <laughs> um, it's about making those connections and making that sense of community because the reason for people are on social media is they are seeking a community. They're seeking a sense of place. And if you can provide that to somebody and you can provide that that sense of peace that comes with a sense of place and a sense of community, that's what that's what you're drawing them into. And you're not going to be able to draw them into I mean, you're going to be 75 percent better with your speaking skills. If you come to our club, that doesn't resonate with people it resonates to people as there's a community there. There's a support system. So everything that you do should be based on that in your communications. It's really important to, to keep that in mind. And, you know, the other thing with social media is it's a great way for guests to find your club because it is a crowded marketplace out there. Um, you know, in an average day, you are bombarded with tens of thousands. I'm trying to remember the number off the top of my head. I think it's 30,000 advertisements in an average day. And we get so many advertisements that we filter a lot of them out. We don't even see them, but we are constantly bombarded with advertisements. So it's about differentiating yourself from all the noise that's out there as well. The other great thing that's good about social media is that you can talk to different generations. Now, there's a lot of if you talk to millennials, it's pretty fun because they're like, oh, I don't do Facebook. And that's kind of funny because if you look at the Facebook metrics, yeah, they do. So even though some generations might be like, I don't do Facebook, that's the grandpa and grandma thing. They are actually on Facebook. Um, they're on YouTube. They're Snapchat and um, Twitter as well. Those are kind of like the, the newer, you know, I want to say newer, but they're like the lesser used. Twitter's a little bit older, but Snapchat's newer, Instagram's newer. So when they're on those, um, they're still communicating and what they're doing is cross posting. They're looking at what's on other sites. So if somebody's on Facebook, they're going to be looking at Instagram stuff. Instagram and Facebook are this, they're owned by the same company. So it's really important to understand that, you know, like Google and YouTube, same company. So when you start posting things, it's important to understand like how everything interconnects. So the first rule of, <laughs> Of, of social media, and this is really, really important, is know your audience. You have to know who you're talking to and you have to drill into really what are their pain points? How can you communicate with them? What language are they expecting to hear from you? Um, how can you create a conversation with them? How can you be authentic in what you're sharing? And um, what I tell people like in, in public relations training, and it, and it goes just as well for social media training, is if you try to be false on the internet, you, you literally have tens of thousands of eyes watching you. And if you try to be false, if you try to deliver a false narrative, if you try to bamboozle people, you will be found out, you will be burned at the stake. So there's no point in doing that. Um, just be yourself. And that is actually a really hard thing for a lot of people to do because they have such a preconceived notion of what they should be when they're online and this persona that they should put for, put forth. Um, so it's really hard for them to be themselves, but that is what people are looking for. So if you can be yourself and you can communicate with them, then you will generate that, that sense of community for them. They'll feel like they know you. They'll feel a lot more comfortable with coming to a meeting. You'll have a lot more, um, rep like I just completely messed up that word in my head, a repertoire. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt that again <laughs> with them. Um, it's late. <laughs> so the other <laughs> okay. thing, the other thing is, like I said, with a cross posting is, you know, if you put something on Instagram, you can post it to Facebook. If you put something on Facebook, you can auto post it to Instagram. And we'll get into the nitty gritty a little bit, but I don't want to go like down any particular avenue too far because like those could be entire classes in and of themselves. So, but you know, like you have to know that YouTube and Facebook don't like each other because right now they're, they're fighting for market share. So if you post a YouTube on Facebook video, it's not going to get any play. In fact, you're actually going to get your metrics are going to be hit pretty hard because Facebook is going to penalize you for putting a YouTube video up. And that's if you're small now, if you're really, really big, they're not going to be able to do that because they're going to be hurting their own metrics. Um, so, but if you're small potatoes, like pretty much all of us are, that will hurt your metrics. The other thing is, you know, the information that you share 
not only should you share it in a story, but make sure it's actually useful information to share, like stuff that people can actually take and use. And that's like where I have that downloadable for people. It's information they can actually take and they can use and they can start developing, like what is the voice? What, what are they gonna share with people? Who is their audience? It'll help kind of ferret out all those different avenues and, and, and what it is that your message is. One thing I see a lot of people do is they, on social media, is they do a lot of I, 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 I. <laughs> um, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And it's you know, me. Um, and that was kind of like what the eyes rolled and you know, like the little like, you know, grin thing on the corner of my mouth is, you know, it don't make it all about you. Be sure to share people, share information, be sure to congratulate people, participate. And if people have a question about something, even if it's not, and this is really important, is don't be restricted to just your platform. If they have a question on something, like say that you're scrolling through post and you see somebody like, you know, I have a presentation coming up, I'm getting nervous about it, then, you know, post a quick, you know, like, hey, here's some, here's some information that'll be helpful for you. Or rec better yet, record a quick video and tell them like, here, here, here's what I do before I give a speech. Now you can include those, like those three tips, and that, but it would be like, you're telling a story, here's what I do when I give a speech, rather than being here's three tips on how to give a speech. And by all means, um, one thing that people realize even more today is that once it's online, it's there, it's not going anywhere, <laughs> it's not disappearing, you can delete it, that doesn't mean it's gone. <laughs> um, there's, you know, screen, people can shoot a screenshot and grab whatever it is that you put up on there, so make sure that you're not a butthead about it. Um, because whatever you put online um, is accessible to everyone, even if you've deleted it. Um, and you've, we've all seen that this has come back and bit different people in the butt um, in the media because they have been, you know, uh, horses patooting on online, thinking that they could just go in and delete the post. And of course, that's not the case. With the, the metrics of like, if we looked at the internet, we looked at particularly like social media, who is where, like, what are they using? We have, and I, I tried to make this graphic kind of representational. So if you notice like the YouTube icon is a lot, you know, it's bigger than the Facebook icon. And that's because they have more market share. People are on YouTube. They like YouTube. They watch YouTube constantly. Uh, we watch, in my own house, we watch YouTube all the time. Um, because there's so much more content out there and you can really drill down into something that you you are very interested in. Um, you know, say for instance that you're interested in basket weaving, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a YouTube video or 20 million out there on basket weaving. Or maybe you're repairing your car and you need to learn how to do that. There are videos out there for that. You know, you could post as a club, you could post a video of the club meeting. Um, you And you could do that on, on YouTube Live, which will garner you even more karma points, shall we call them, with YouTube or with Facebook, if you did Facebook Live as well. So YouTube is a big, big market share. Coming in right on that on their heels is to Facebook, and Facebook is the next big market share. Now, about two, two and a half years ago, Facebook woke up and took a look at YouTube and went, oh boy, we had better pick up our pace and actually start doing video. Um, and they woke up to the need of doing video. So they have really, really been pushing video. And in fact, the, the, the posts that have more video content on them do better than the posts that are written out posts. So if you do a post on Facebook, it will do better if it's a video post versus a written post. Now, anything that you're doing on any of these sites, whether it's YouTube or Twitter or LinkedIn or Snapchat, what, it doesn't matter what platform it is, all of this should be driving traffic back to your website. That's your goal is to bring people back into your website. So if you do a post and say it's like more than 150 words, be sure to post that actually on your website if you're doing a video, do a do a YouTube video and you can put that on your website for the link. You don't wanna do embeds. Embedded is where you actually, there's a code that you can pull and you can embed it on your website. You wanna actually post the video on your website or post a link to it because your metrics will improve if you do that. So your number, your viewing numbers will improve a lot if you do that. But um, so when you, when 
you look at everything, think of everything as like feeding into your website or feeding into your email list because your website really is going to be what you're collecting emails on so that you can go forth and you can communicate with these people once they've signed up and they've said, okay, I'm interested in your information, but I'm still kind of timid about it. Then you can say, hey, I posted a new YouTube video. Here's the link to it. So email is one of the ways that you can continue to communicate. But back to social media, um, Instagram, like I said, Instagram and Google are linked. Um, oh no, wait, Inst I'm sorry, Instagram and Facebook are linked. And so if you, you can cross post between the two and Facebook a couple years ago bought out Instagram. So, so Instagram is a really good one to do it as well, especially if you're doing any advertising dollars. Let me stop for just a second and tell you, if you have a Facebook page and you get the thing that says boosted post, you know, you can boost this post and reach 5,000 extra people for only $10. If you want to spend $10 on that, just go ahead and mail the check to me um, because that's about as good as what you're going to get out of that post. So when you do a boost, boosted post, it's not as good as doing an actual ad. So if you have the money to do an ad, which is technically what a boosted post is, it's just a very, very, very weak ad, then you really should go into the power editor and take your time and actually develop an ad set um, so that you can be actively advertising and tracking. Um, and you simply cannot do that with a boosted post. It's it's not, it's it's just doesn't work. And I, I hate seeing people waste their money on boosted post. It's kind of like um, when you when you go to the restaurant and they say, would you like dessert with that? And you get dessert and you're like, well, I really shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> so then you have Pinterest, which is the next big guy on the block. Now, Pinterest comes in at 29% um, of the market. The, the, um, the, the Pinterest, or the, the Pinterest, I sound like the Google, I sound like my husband going, um, do you got the internets on? Um, <laughs> so Pinterest is, um, it, it's basically a pin board. Like if you can picture and you're like the, the pin boards of old where you'd actually take a little picture and you pin it to the board and you look at it. So it's a it's an extremely visually driven market and you can link to your pins. So you could have a picture of somebody giving a speech and you could link it to the pin and then have them come to your website. Um, Pinterest is a different format than the other ones because of the way it's extremely visually driven by these pin boards. The next one, Snapchat. Snapchat's really fast. Um, you can do a lot with Snapchat. They do have video in Snapchat, but it's a much, much younger demographic. Um, so I don't advise for using Snapchat at this point. LinkedIn is the more professional environment. Um, you're looking at businesses, communicating. So it's you need to like step it up a notch versus like what you might put on YouTube or what you might have on Facebook, which is much more conversational, kind of a little bit more laid back. Um, LinkedIn is, you know, just a step above, a little bit more professional. You can be a little bit more laid back in LinkedIn. You don't have to be really, really uptight. But if you are looking for a potential career opportunity, then you want to keep it really, really professional or whatever is appropriate for the career field that you're in. Um, the next guy on the block is Twitter. You can see Twitter only comes in at 24. And WhatsApp is at 22. Um, Twitter is is great if you're having a conference, if you're having a meeting with a lot of people, because Twitter is the one that you can use your hashtag marks on. And you can use hashtags as well on um, uh, Instagram, but those are more, more like for searching. Um, whereas Twitter is like somebody can be like, okay, I want to pay attention to this hashtag, and then they can follow everything that comes up on that. So say that you're going to a conference, um, or you're having a conference, or you're having a meeting, you could post things that have the hashtag and then you can have people tweeting and a lot of times what they'll do when you do a conference is you'll actually have you know, like maybe 10 or 12 people who are like the primary tweeters so their their job is to constantly post about how great the conference is what's all going on in the conference do maybe quick interviews with people at the conference post comments about it so they keep that feed moving and pe so it keeps coming up on people's feeds and they get excited about it because all this motion is going on with it so I want to give you guys an idea of, um, see if you have any questions here. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, just post them in the um, the chat, the window. And um, I can't see the window while I'm giving the presentation, so I'm popping back and forth. But I'm going to give yeah, you a minute. Yeah, I don't see any yet. Not okay. yet. Well, see, I'm doing such a great job. They don't have any questions. That's right. <laughs> so this, 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 this metric, this absolutely blows my mind. 300 of hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute of the day. 
that and it's only increasing. That's that's even crazier. Is that I'm sure this number, which I pulled up like a week ago, I am sure this number is out of date at this point. It it it's probably more than this. Um, and you know, one point three billion people use YouTube. That is insane. Now the thing with the with with YouTube is most people do view it on a mobile device, and the trick that we found is that when you get past the 55 minute or 55 second mark is where you get into that higher watch rate. So whatever you put on YouTube has to be fast moving, catchy, tell a story, grab their attention, draw them in within the first 55 seconds. And actually it's really kind of within about the first 15 to 25 seconds. You do not, if you're doing YouTube videos, you do not want to have the really long, extremely boring intro with like maybe the pictures sliding in and out of view. Um, that you don't want that. You want somebody talking. You want you want it to be like the beginning of a mystery novel where you start out with the 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 person staying over the body with a bloody knife. You want it starting out with action first. It's, it's got to grab their attention. They have to be like, what is going on here? I have to watch this. And the other thing with YouTube is that you have to be really, really good about your thumbnail, um, your, your description of what the video is about and your thumbnail. Your thumbnail is the little picture that shows up on the, the dashboards. Like if I went and looked for videos, it'd be the little picture that shows up of the video. And that's where you're going to have like the title and stuff over the top of that that image. And you could actually go in and set the thumbnail. Now, it's kind of notorious with people who do YouTube videos is if you don't set the thumbnail, they manage to pick the worst frame shot to use as your thumbnail. So definitely go in and take the time to build your thumbnail so that you can put it on there. Now you can build it as a template and then just you know plug and play with the next information that's on there. A lot of people do that. One of the best people that I found, actually there's two that are the best people, make sure you guys write this down, um, is Nick Neiman, and it's um, N-I-M-N-I-N, and he is absolutely amazing. Um, he talks all about YouTube and how to do video and like how to add different stuff to your video, how to shoot the video, so on and so forth. Really, really awesome presenter, and you'll see what I mean by capturing your attention right away. The other one is Video Creators, and that's by Tim Schwimmer, here, who's here actually in this area. And his he that's this is their income. This is their this is what they do for a living. So these guys really do know what they're talking about, and they have really really good advice um, if you're going to go down the video route, which I highly recommend, because that this is what they do for a living. They study these metrics, they eat, sleep, and breathe the metrics, and they can help you develop your videos better just by watching their free YouTube videos. Of course, they have courses as well, but they have a lot of free information online. Now, YouTube is weighted more towards men than women, um, but that statistic's quickly, quickly changing. So I don't expect that to stay the same. Um, you know, by 2019, 2020, that's pretty much probably gonna be an even, even uh, field. As you can see by the numbers underneath the icon on the left-hand side, you can see how it's weighted for the different age groups. And, you know, for the age groups that are going to be interested in Toastmasters, you know, you've got 25 to 64, you know, it's most of the marketplace. So YouTube is a great avenue to use to promote your club. Um, and like I said earlier, most of the video views are from a mobile device. Um, so your video, your audio needs to be good um, because most likely they're going to have in an earbud at the time while they're watching it. So you need to make sure you don't have any big spikes where you're, you're <laughs> destroying their hearing or you're not whispering the entire time. So it's harder for them to hear or there's not a lot of background noise. And that's just simple. That's just simply a factor of buying a really good microphone. And, and you can get a decent microphone for, for almost nothing nowadays. Now, Facebook, Facebook's a different format. You have, you can build a longer message in Facebook and a lot of people kind of use Facebook as their own blog and, you know, social media is kind of like, it used to be, you know, micro blogging. I did, I did air um, quotes there, you guys can see that. Um, but it's really evolved from there. If you are going to do a longer post, then you should be writing a blog post on your website and then posting a link to it on Facebook and on the different social media channels with some type of, of teaser to catch their interest. You need to have good visuals, which there's so many different, I mean, one, you could take pictures because everybody has a smartphone now, they could take pictures. The other thing is, is there's different companies, there's Pexels, which is P-E-X-E-L-S, 
And there's also Pixabay, which is P-E-X-A-B-A-Y. And both of those companies are online and you can download images from them for free. So you can get a lot of really good iconic images um, to use to grab people's attention. Now, anytime that you do use images online from a Freebase site, I highly recommend that you grab a screenshot of your download page that says download and free for use for personal or commercial use. And I actually just have a Word file that all my screenshots go in. Because there has been people, there have been people in the marketplace who post images for free and then wait till they get out there for three to six months and then they turn around and start charging a fee for the images. Well, sorry, they take them off the free sites and then they start charging a fee for the images and then they sue people for copyright infringement. And then you have to, if you go to court, copyright infringement cases usually are about $7,500. So it, to, they will say, okay, to settle this, we'll settle out of court for $5,000. So the best thing you can do is grab a screenshot of that so you can prove that, no, this was free from this company. You know, this is, I did everything appropriately um, for the image. And if you're really terrified of the images, then you could just buy, <clears throat> excuse me, an account to Adobe Stock. Um, and they give you like 20 images to start for free or iStock. There's a lot of different um, paid accounts out there. But if you're looking for free stuff, Pexels and Pixabay are two of the really, really well-known ones. Um, now back to like some of the stuff inside of Facebook itself is <laughs> don't use hashtags. Um, Facebook does not work on hashtags. Um, in fact, if you use hash hashtags, there's kind of the misnomer or there's kind of the the chain of thought of that you're actually going to get you know a little bit um, a ding on your metrics or your 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 numbers are going to go down because of it. Um, never post a YouTube video to Facebook because Facebook will definitely ding you on that. Um, it will, you, you will never see the light of day. The only viewer will be you um, of that video. And you'll also see your numbers go down for the rest of your post. So it'll take you a while to build that back up or go in and delete that video. Now you can actually, if you shot a video you, and you've got the MP4, of it, what you can simply do is just take that MP4 and plunk it onto YouTube and plunk it onto Facebook. Um, so as long as it's in that format, but if it's a it's a it's a YouTube format, or it's a link, you cannot post it to Facebook. I mean, you can, but it's just going to not do you any good at all. Now with Facebook, you know, you post, 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 post. Um, Facebook likes you to be a chatty Kathy, so you want to be out there having conversations, posting, commenting on other people's posts, sharing. Uh, liking, um, you know, just just be that participant, be an active participant, and not just post on your site. Like I said, posting comments, make sure you answer people's questions. You can be a good Samaritan, go out there and find questions to answer because there are a lot of different formats. Like, you know, in your particular area, you might have like a, a business group that meets and they've got a Facebook page and you could join their Facebook page and you could be the person, the go-to person to answer any, you know, questions about public speaking. So you need to, to, Fill that role and provide that service to people so that you help develop that sense of community. And like I already, I already talked about, don't boost, boost a post. Um, and like I said, you know, if you, you want to spend the money, just go ahead and mail it to me. Um, and then you can, a lot of times too, people think that, um, so they, they, you know, your content will stay relatively the same over the course of it. You know, if we compared 2017 content to 2018 content, really there's going to be a lot of similarities. I mean, we have the same holidays in every year. You have the, you know, you have people getting different certificates. So a lot of the stuff you can write once and you can template a fair amount of it and then just repurpose and repost. So say for example that there we have like an open house, then you could write up your template for your open house. And then the next year when the open house comes up, you just go pull your template, repurpose the content in your template and repost and post it new. Um, no one is really going to remember except for you and, and that one person who's completely OCD um, in your group that you that you posted this a year ago because no one's paying that much attention. There's way too much information out there for them to pay that much attention to whatever it is that you're posting. And if you want any of your posts to, to be more present on your page, then you can actually go in and you can pin the post to your timeline. So if you look at your Facebook post, there'll be three little dots up in the right hand side. And you, if you click on that, it'll pull up like a little drop down menu and you can pin the post and that's where it goes right at the top of the screen. So it's easier for people to see um, the information that you've posted. 
Now, like I said, Twitter is typically used um, in, in kind of the marketplace where it's going to be a fast conversation. So uh, a conference is a great place to use Twitter. Um, if something as you know, like uh, say the um, there's a gala going on, so anything where there's there's almost a conversation going on between people and everybody, you know, think of it like walking into a room where there's like a ton of people all talking about the same thing and you get to listen to all these conversations. That's more like Twitter is. That's where those hashtags come in really, really well for being able to track what the conversation's about. And the one thing with Twitter is that the lifespan of a tweet is really short and 18 minutes is, is actually extremely, I think it's shorter than 18 minutes. Um, cause that seems like a, a, a lifetime in a tweet and a, a Twitter post or a tweet. Um, so the, the messages are typically short messages. Sometimes you can, you can, well, sometimes you'll see links in the messages, images and stuff like that, but by far it's going to be a fast moving conversation. It's going to be, um, comments on things and a dialogue that's going on on Twitter. So Twitter's Twitter's much more interactive and kind of on top of it. Now you can post tweets, you can schedule with all of these, you can go in or except for YouTube, you can go in and you can schedule when the posts appear. So like I said, with that repurposing content, if you have, you know what's coming up over the course of a year, you could sit down and you could record all of your videos, you could write all of your posts and you could go in and use the scheduler and schedule everything out. So that way you're not having to sit down like every single week and do this. So you're able to, to streamline your time um, so that you're not forcing yourself to like, oh, God, it's Tuesday. I have to get this done. Um, you would just sit down one day and you get it done maybe, you know, not one day, but you know, like one or two days in, in one week and you're able to knock out all of this content for, you know, maybe three months um, and then just do scheduled posts. And the reason for, the reason you want to do something like that is because it allows you to be a lot more uh, nimble when you're out there and, and really develop that sense of like the banter almost because now you're not trying to produce your normal content and produce these comments on people's posts and you know be that person who answers questions it's a lot easier to divide that workload hey you know, Tammy yeah. uh, Michael had a question might be a good time to ask it okay. here he said what type of videos do you think are best for promoting Toastmasters full speeches or tip videos I think it may be more towards YouTube or Facebook. I think but. the I think um, to go back to the story is you could do a full uh, video of somebody's. Uh, here's here's what I suggest is that you sit down and record the person doing the video, like do a live recording of it if you want to, of them doing the video. Make sure you get permission um, because obviously you want their they're okay to do that. Um, so in, in a, if, you, if you're not given permission to do a live, then do a recorded video of their presentation. And then what I would do is after they've given their presentation, maybe the meeting's over and stuff like that, is turn the camera around and you sit with that person and ask them, mm -hmm. you know, so what made you think of this idea for your presentation? What were some things that you were worried about? What was the biggest obstacle that you overcame? Like just think of like three questions, three or four questions to ask them so that you get their point of view in it and then post that because really that's that's where you go back to that story. So you could be like, here's all these questions we have and here's the video of this person giving the speech. So you could maybe even do it like a before and after, you know, where you interview them before, they give the speech and you interview them after. It's gonna create, you're gonna have a little bit more workload obviously with it. But um, you know, when I was at the, the conference and um, um, Bill was talking, I shot a couple quick videos as I was walking around the room um, and then I just popped it into iMovie. I cut them together, did dissolves between the frames, but I kept that background noise in there. So you have that level of excitement um, in it. So you can hear the, that, you know, the, the sound of the meeting going on right. um, and then posted that. And that took like, you know, maybe I'm thinking probably maybe five minutes to shoot and 10 minutes to edit while I was also paying attention to what Bill, you know, kind of like half paying attention to both um, of what was going on in the room to get that posted um, to show people like, okay, this is what you can do and this is how fast you can do it. So you don't have to be really um, extraordinary. You don't have, it doesn't have to be like really, really, I, let me try like back up here. I think people tend to think cinematic and it doesn't need to be cinematic. It needs to be like, and we're at the meeting today and I'm sitting down with, you know, Mike and, or Michael and, you know, tell me about the speech you've got coming up, you know, are you, you know, have you prepared for it? So on and so forth. And you can go, well, what'd you do to prepare for it? He gives a speech. And then afterwards 
you know, okay, well, what do you think of your speech? What would you have changed? Uh, was, did, did, were any of those things that you had in your head that were going to go wrong? Did any of them go wrong? You know, kind of go at it like that and, and just put it together really quick. Like, boom, boom, boom. It does not need to be long. And you don't even need to record the entire speech. In fact, you could just record snippets of the speech if you wanted to. Um, so that you can tell the story of it without boring the audience. And that sounded really bad for whoever's given the speech. <laughs> But you could include the whole speech. Um, so just try to think and story thing like, okay, how how would I tell you what? Um, Emily Maxwell, um, if you guys look her up online, she's with um, WCPO here in Cincinnati, and she does an amazing job of telling stories. Like she's she's just phenomenal storyteller, and she just has this great way of of leading you through this story and it's it's beautiful it's ab it's just beautiful and you watch the story and you're like you know what happened to a half hour um because <laughs> you've been following along this story because she does such a great job of telling the story but she's not telling you know like you know okay so she did like one on the terracotta army she's not telling like and she's not telling like all the facts she's telling the story of how they found it, how why it's here in Cincinnati, that you can go view it. And she's telling it from the, the, the viewpoint of the people who are involved with it. So she's really letting them tell the story. And, and I think that's important is to let your members tell the story of the meetings and to share that then, you know, with you with your potential audience. Okay, thank you. Maybe about 10 more minutes for the rest, if you can. Okay. I know you got <laughs> several more slides and then we'll have maybe Hopefully, 10 minutes or so for Q&A. There's... Okay. Okay. I want to whip through it then here. Okay. So, LinkedIn is mainly business. Um, keep it to business. Uh, it's it's kind of weighted more towards men than women, but that's that's evening out really, really fast. Um, when you do LinkedIn, you can do video and you can do posts. But again, LinkedIn's like Facebook. You want anything to be going right back to your website because that's your goal is to get people to your website. Um, Meetup is one of the things that you can use. Um, there's actually within the District 40 um, website, you can go to resources and you can go to the meetup um, and you can post your club's meet up, or your club's meetings on meetup and then that's posted for everybody to see. I grabbed a quick screenshot so you can see the different groups that you can like kind of like interest groups that you have. So like maybe you're interested in pets so you could click on that and it's going to be having all the different groups that have pets and it would be from like people who own rabbits to people who own you know dinosaurs. Um, so it's going to cover the gamut on pets. Um, making sure you guys are still awake. Um, so <laughs> think of it kind of like as like-minded groups and there might be groups in there that would be good to go and talk to about Toastmasters because a lot of those groups are actually looking for people to come and talk to their group. Um, people to come in and present to the group and, sh and share their knowledge with with their people. You know, maybe you have like a, you know, your specialty um, is public speaking and you go into a group that's uh, maybe it's like a, a group of um, people who do uh, books for a living, like authors. And you go in and you talk about, OK, this is how you actually speak to people because, you know, authors are typically known as kind of like being hermits. We don't, <laughs> we don't like to leave our computers. Um, so, you know, you could go in and do like a presentation to that group about public speaking and, you know, maybe generate more people it's at your meeting. Now, I did say on here it's pay to play if you have your own group, but there is the free stuff through the, um, the District 40 resources. So the driving force behind social media, I flipped through that really fast, is video. If I haven't made that abundantly clear yet, it's a video. Mm -hmm. um, the average length for viewing time is 55 seconds. So that's why you have to get you have to get them in there at, at like the it's really, really fast. You have to get their attention. So the average view duration you can see is like only 18.2 seconds. Um, but once you get past those markers, like those are the hurdles. Once you get past those hurdles, then they're more likely to stay around for 40 minutes. They're more likely to come back and keep watching your videos or to watch whatever the next video is that you have up. So it's really important to have very engaging content. And I, um, these are screenshots of the different um, the dashboards for the YouTube and Facebook video pages. Now, no matter what platform that you choose, you need to make sure that you understand the, the basics of the platform, understand what the best practices are, take some time, look at a couple, you know, read a couple of articles on it, watch a couple of videos on it. And they're like, what are the rules of posting? And also what are the unwritten rules of posting? 
know your audience. So you have to know your demographics, know their pain points, know what their expectations are. It's really important to know their pain points because if you can talk to people's pain points, then you're able to solve a problem for you, for them. And they really like that. That's something people, they, they like, you know, you saw that pain point. Um, make sure you participate, answer questions, and include and invite and, and share your content. Now, in, on invite and include, one thing that I do like in, in real life and personally, when I go to a conference, if, if I'm sitting down to dinner with a group of people and we have like an open position at our table, if I see somebody with a conference badge walk in and they kind of do that first like look around the room, like terrified look around the room of, you know, where do I sit? I really don't know anybody at this conference. I go up and I get that person and I was like, hey, would you like to join our table? And think about social media as doing that. You're going out there and you're saying to people, you know, hey, would you like to join us? Would you like to come in? We would, you know, you're more than welcome to come in. Hey, did you did you know this? So think about it as being a very warm and inviting environment um, for them. Now I know like everything that I, this is one of my favorite pictures. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything thing I've thrown at you, you might be like, oh my gosh, you might feel like this poor little terrified chihuahua underneath this. It, the rest of the picture is this woman's derriere is quite large. Um, and she's on a tiny, tiny little folding chair. And you might be thinking like, this is like crushing. Like I have to do all this stuff. This is insane. Like I don't have that much time. Um, this is where it comes in, like don't wing it. Um, go in, develop what's called a content calendar. Come up with, like I talked earlier about what's gonna be posted, when it's gonna be posted, where you could cross post it at. Just spend some time, like dedicate, you know, like four hours. Okay, I'm gonna write up, you know, 25 tweets, 25 quick things to, to post on Twitter and I can go out and schedule them all. I'm gonna write up, you know, 25 posts on Facebook. And then if you do shoot a lot of videos all at once, you can, well, with the post you can schedule them. But if you do shoot videos all at once, I highly recommend that you remember to change your shirt <laughs> because there's nothing yeah. like shooting like three months worth of videos where you don't apparently ever change your clothes. Um, which is kind of funny because you see people do that occasionally. Um, it's kind of one of the, the insider jokes with, with people who do YouTube. Just kind of remember to change your shirt. Um, so it, the, the content calendar allows you to have that flexibility um, to be nimble, to, to comment, and to be able to share and so on and so forth. Um, and the, the, that's, that's great because you can actually do what's, what's writing a trend. So if there is a trend that's coming up, um, say something you know happens with somebody really makes a really bad error where they're up public speaking and everybody's talking about you know how terrifying public speaking is, that is a perfect opportun opportunity for you to ride that trend. But if you're so worried about getting your post out, then you're gonna be like, well, I've got to write this post, so can I, can I do the, you know, and you're torn between the two, whereas if you already have the post done, then you can ride the, tr the trend and you have even more content out there. So, and be, by all means, do Facebook Live, do YouTube Live, um, just get on there and get used to being live on camera. It will not kill you, you will survive it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know like some people are like, that is completely terrifying. So um, I do have the the gift for you guys that was at the the link um, and that's has that worksheet in it. Um, and let me go back. So it has the worksheet in it. We'll get to get you started on, you know, discovering like who your audience is, what their pain points are, what they need to know um, and how you can help them out. And that will help you start to develop your social media calendar. So, but <laughs> by far pick one social media channel and start there. Don't try to be like seven social media channels all at the same time. You're going to dominate the planet because that's going to work for about a week and a half. And then you're going to be laying on the floor wondering what hit you because you're going to be completely in overwhelm. Don't do that to yourself. Um, pick one social media channel and roll with that one. There you go. That was my fast ending. <laughs> Wow. Thank you so much for the inspirational and informative uh, presentation on social media. I really enjoyed the the qualitative and the quantitative information. I, I like on the quantitative side, the statistics about the, the usages of Facebook and YouTube, you know, by far outweighing or out, um, or I wouldn't say outclassing the others, I guess, if you Dominating. will. Dominating. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> But I really appreciate that. Uh, Michael had a question also. He said, you mentioned about schedule posts here, just I think in the past couple slides. Mm -hmm. Do you use a third party social media scheduler? I used to use um, Hootsuite, which is a really common scheduler. Um, but all the platforms have scheduling, like, uh, um, sorry, Facebook has scheduling within it. 
Um, if you have a website, like you say you do a WordPress website, there's a scheduler inside of the program. I'm pretty sure Twitter has a scheduler within it. I don't work as, with Twitter as much. Um, I would assume it does. Um, the reason I don't use Hootsuite anymore is because it um, had a lot of glitches in it and I wasn't happy with the performance. I know other people are really happy with Hootsuite, um, but I just wasn't happy with you know how much it cost versus the performance I was getting out of it. So that's why I just went in and started doing the post through the schedulers within the platforms. But I have used it. Um, and you can do um, uh, bulk downloads for your post in Hootsuite um, by putting them into an Excel, Excel file and then downloading the CSV. Um, but that's where I was having problems out with the post actually showing up the way that, showing up properly, showing up when they were supposed to be scheduled to show up. There was a lot of difficulties with it. Okay. Thank you. Uh I, I had a question, and I think Rick has a similar question. He said, early in your presentation, you mentioned video creators. Uh, it was like Nick Neiman or something like that. Yeah, or Yeah, I posted in the comments their names. Oh, okay. And I'll post okay, it. Okay, excellent. Nick Neiman. Is it N-I-M-N? Uh, uh, that's really weird. Do yeah, you, it's, he, it's he pretty cool. It's a his, palindrome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, N-I-M-M-I-N. Yeah, so backwards and forwards. <laughs> I would have never have figured that out. He's Tim yeah. Schmoyer. 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 <laughs> Schmoyer. Okay. Um, and he's S-C-H-M-O-Y-E-R? -E mm -hmm. And he's Video okay. Creators is the company okay. he owns. Ah, uh, okay. And then there's the... Um, You said something about, I think it was like Pixabay and yeah, I'll get this. Uh, a couple yeah. companies that were giving out icons to kind of boost your, okay. Oh, that's supposed to be a dot, not a comma. Um, Pixels.com, okay. And it wasn't there one like a Pixabay? Yeah, Pixabay. 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 Now these are Pixabay. for these are for images. So if okay. you're looking for an image, so you see when if okay, I found this really bizarre picture of a clown um, because I was looking for a picture of a clown and there's like a like a doll made up like a clown. It actually looked like a person. It was really creepy. Um, so you can really find. I mean, if you could find that on these, you're going to be able to find a picture you can use. <laughs> so so they, they've got, between the two sites, they have a lot of pictures that are available. Um, and just make sure you do the screenshots though and you keep a log of what you've downloaded. Um, it just in order, just grab a screenshot, copy it and paste it into a Word file and have that be like images I used on, and then like whatever the blog site is that you're using them on. Okay. And then if you ever, you know, get blowback from it, you can scroll through there and, and find the, the image. Because it's not like they give you a written receipt and say, like, and here's the image you downloaded. Um, <laughs> so that's really the only evidence that you have that, you know, hey, I went through this site. It said it was commercial. Um, and they, these two sites are reputable sites. Um, so okay. uh, they're not like some of the one. So, yeah, the screenshot's really important. Like, anytime you're grabbing images off the, the Internet, make sure you do screenshots. Okay. And just like a Word file is the easiest way to keep them. It's like the least amount of data. Um, if you put them in a PowerPoint, it's going to cost you a lot more um, space on your computer. You can just pop them into a Word file. Okay, super. Uh, Lubinia had a question, and actually this is a good one for all of us who are taking on the VPPR roles in our club. It says, what is the average weekly time that you would recommend to allocate promoting a club on social media, a Toastmasters club, I would assume? You know, I would... I don't, it really depends on you and like what you're able to do. I mean, any is going to be good. Um, it, it just really depends on how much time you have available to you to, to work it and what you think is going to be best based on your club. Like if you have a club that's mainly older members, you know, then you're probably going to want to be mostly on Facebook. If you have a club that's mostly career people, then you're going to want to spend a fair amount of time on LinkedIn. Um, but it's going to depend on how much time you have um, mm -hmm. to, to dedicate. Just like with any volunteer position, it's going to depend on how much time you have to dedicate to it. To actually see traction, though, um, yeah, I would say just like, in, I wouldn't say like, okay, in this four hours is what I'm going to spend time on, unless you're actually writing, um, you're, you're creating content. If you're doing that, then then like schedule it. You know, this is the time period I do this. I'm going to create, you know, like all that structured content for like three months. 
schedule that time. But if you're commenting stuff on posts, I would just do that on the fly. I would have like it just set up in whatever social media um, platform that you that your group is going to be primarily in. And I would be posting on that, you know, like while I'm waiting in line at the grocery store um, or while okay. I'm waiting to pick up the kids um, because you can't really schedule that type you of stuff. Fill you fill it in some time. Yeah. <laughs> fill it that, in with some dead time, uh, like you said, when you're waiting for something or that sort of thing. Yeah. And actually what I do on my phone is I keep a, um, on uh, the notes, I have an iPhone. It has a little, little notes pad because I don't like okay. getting, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't like having like 25 different programs. I have enough 25 right. different programs on my computer. So I have a notes. Um, I just use the, the one that's with the phone. And if I find like a link that I think would be helpful for, you know, like my, especially the hiking people, I'll just, I'll copy that and put it in there. And then mm -hmm. as like the day is going on, I might, you know, I might post that and I'll, and I might save that too as like a link I could post to somebody's like question. Like, oh, here's this, here's this article I found. Um, that'll be helpful to you. Um, the other thing I do is I keep like, I have like standard responses to people's questions. And mm -hmm. so I keep those responses also in notes. So I can just go in and copy it and then paste it. So I'm not writing That's like awesome. 150 yeah. words to answer somebody's question. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is that their their phone, um, when you're in any of the programs on your phone, especially if you you know you have a smartphone, you do have that voice to text um, capability. Right. So you know you can just hit that, and while you're waiting, you can. Re Most people aren't going to realize if you have your earbud in that you're talking to yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking to somebody else. It's great technology for us people who talk to ourselves. Um, so you can record what your blog post is while you're waiting in line at the grocery store and no one's going to look at you sideways. They're just going <laughs> to think you're obnoxious for talking on your phone. Um, yep. Or you know, like, wow, like I, like I actually write a fair amount of stuff while I'm waiting to pick my kids up from something. Um, because a lot of those are like, they, they just come to me in the moment. And, and one thing that you find out a lot once you get into writing is like when it comes to you in the moment is the best time to write it, not to wait until you get home and you have time. Um, uh, so it's it's best to just try to grab whatever it is that you see that's trending near like, oh, I should respond. Like that would be really good to respond to. That's when you should respond to it. And if you do that voice to text, you can do that a lot faster or, you know, just shoot a video. Um, if you do do video, another really quick tip is make sure that you run it through um, uh, YouTube will give you um, basically closed captioning. So you can run it through their system um, to to match what you're saying with actually like words on the screens for the closed captioning. But you do have to go through and watch your watch and listen to make sure it got all the words right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because <laughs> um, there's been some doozies that have gotten it's gotten wrong. I told them I was like for some reason every time I said that I was saying the word pond in this one and it kept coming out kimono. I have no idea how that worked. Um, <laughs> so, but it was rather interesting. Um, <laughs> so just make sure that when you read through, if you can go in and edit it, um, because the crazy thing about video is most people watch it with the sound off. Yes. And they read it, which is hilarious because they're reading, they're reading it <laughs> slower than they could have read it if it was just a blog post. But they like that. They like the movement. I wanted to go back to a question that uh, you actually gave to me earlier today, and I didn't go over at the beginning. It's and uh, so I understand that you have a business that focuses on the marketing for their companies. And I think that came through for today's. So can you kind of go through maybe the chronology of how you got to build your business? <laughs> um, okay, so I worked for the man, I worked for the state. And um, I, I realized uh, at one point that I really, I was, I, I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. I had, I had my first child. And I realized I really wanted to spend more time with her. And I wasn't able to do that in the job that I had because I was um, the crisis person. So when basically the poop was hitting the fan, I was the person they stuck in front of a camera. Mm. Um, and so that that required a lot of my time. And I was also a, one of the a presenters for a lot of different programs. And I was a trained facilitator. So I got called away to do a lot of like weekend workshops. And I didn't want to be that way that long. So I started figuring out like, okay, what am I good at? And I figured out I was good at, you know, marketing and communicating and writing. And I started doing that and then quickly realized that I was making more money doing that than I was with a full-time job. Um, so wow. within less than two years of starting my company and also during that same time period, having another child, 
um, I was able to quit my full-time job, move completely into the business. Um, and then right after I quit, I got my book deal for 60 Hikes Within 60 Miles Cincinnati, which I would have never gotten because I would not have been on the phone with the person. At It's like everything worked out perfectly. Um, and so I was able to to quit and set my own hours and do my own thing. And, you know, if I need to take time off to, you know, go, go to a kid's choir practice, then I can do that. I don't have to ask anybody, but, but That's my boss, cool. who's just really, really mean, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> makes me work well, all night. <laughs> so kind of related to that. So what do you do for your clients and how does that translate to us here at Toastmasters? Um, I help my clients figure out what their stories are and how their stories can make an impact on their audience. And that's a process of going really into like, okay, what is this? What is it that your business does? How does it help those people? You know, and actually like, tell me how it helps Susie. Don't, don't tell me like how it helps 18,000 Susie's. Tell me how it helps Susie. Um, and really making them drill down into the the nitty gritty. And a lot of people, they would kind of want to, you know, they go, okay, well, we talk to 34 to 54 year old women. Okay, well, what does this woman do? You know, do they do they have children? Do they have jobs? Do they have dogs? Do they have cats? Do they drive a minivan? Do they drive a truck? <laughs> they tell, tell me exactly who that person is. Um, you know, down to like, does she wear nail polish or not? Does she wear makeup or not? Does she, you know, like, get right down into the nitty gritty of it. Cause once you do that, then it's a lot easier to tell the story. Um, and then also just figuring out like, okay, what is the story? Um, Cause it's sometimes it's really, really hard uh, for people when you're, it's kind of like when you're in the swamp, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to remember the purpose was to, you're, you're, you're like so busy being in the swamp. You're, you forget what your, what your, your purpose is, what your mission is, what your goal is. And yep. so that's, that's what I help people do is I help them, dial back down into that and figure out like, okay, well, what is it that you're seeing that can really help resonate with your market? Thank you for giving us that perspective on yourself and your business. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, one one last question uh, that we have from Luvenia and it's on branding. So she asks, is there uh, any Toastmasters international branding issues that we need to keep uh, in our minds when we use video? I have no idea. It's not uh -huh. sure. I'm maybe not that's sure. something we can ask. Uh, maybe yeah, I, Don or Don or Kathy. Maybe we can yeah. take that. Yeah, that's out of my. I'll take that offline. <laughs> so see if they see if there's any you know branding Thanks, issues. Mike. So um, yeah, so Mike just posted a link to the the brand. Oh, Michael's. Yeah, yeah. Michael got it. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know. Like obviously, the, just follow whatever it says there. Um, okay. With it. Um, Follow that. <laughs> she says. I'm going to, to let me screen. share my let me share my screen this time. I'm going to share my screen and let's see if I can do that here. I'll turn mine off. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to share mine. Okay, so I think I'm sharing right now. Do you guys see it? Hopefully, you guys I see, see it. it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So hopefully there's a way that uh, you, you can get some more information in here on brand and trademark standards and and that sort of thing for gavel clubs, for conference materials, for campaigns, you know, for that if you're running for office. And then some design st uh, standards here as well. Okay, well, I wanted to just, uh, uh, before we leave, I wanted to just give a plug for our District 40 Facebook and uh, YouTube channels, and, and also maybe just give a, a shout to the meetup groups that we that, that you mentioned earlier. So here's our Facebook channel. So look for, for us on Facebook. Uh, really, you know, we only have about 38 members, if I can see in there, but I think there's more, I think this is starting to grow. Well, actually, it says 678. So sorry, it, there's more than 38. There's about 678 actually. And there's I only 38 this, that are active. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 38 active, like you said. But uh, I, I've just started. And actually, this is this has been really good. I'm glad I joined this within the past couple of months. And then uh, our YouTube channel as well is really popular. They post some past, not only of these Wednesday webinars, but also of maybe uh, contests. 
the actual contestants that are just in the recent spring conference for the evaluation contest and the international speech contest. So you can get a chance to see exactly what they're what they're doing here. So that's a really good way to do it. Uh, and then also on our District 40 website here, the members.d40toastmasters.org, uh, you mentioned under resources, you can see the meetup groups, which I'm showing here. So just to give you a, a brief overview of some of the social media channels, uh, the more popular ones inside of District 40, I highly encourage you to go and, and take a look at those. And then uh, we're going to post these videos on the District 40 website here and then also on our YouTube channel. So if you have a chance, uh, if you have those of you who are looking in online, if you have any comments, uh, feel free after you leave the video or after you or maybe even during the video, leave your comments in the in the in the comment screen down uh, in each of uh, in the particular video that you're watching. And hopefully it will somebody get back to you very quickly. So I, I wanted to thank everybody for joining and uh, Tammy, really big thanks to you to provide such a very informative and inspirational uh, message on social media. Uh, I think it's really important. I think it's hopefully going to grow and grow and hopefully we're going to be able to use it more in District 40. Great. Thank you Don't so much everybody for, for joining. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Don't be afraid of live video. <laughs> Yes, don't be afraid. Take a chance and and put yourself out there. You never know what you'll get. Um, and if, if it doesn't go so well, I'm sure there's learning opportunities there for you. Thanks again, everybody, for joining. And we hope to see you later and see you soon. Great. Thanks, everybody, for having me. Take care.